<laughs> and welcome, dear viewers, to the cradle of bone-shattering terror, the place of unspeakable horror, the moderately-sized bedroom of mild scariness, for you have joined me in the spooky place. And it is here we find our next game, one of such menace, one of such, such menace, one of, for fuck's sake. What? Alex, hey, it's Broski, how's it going? Oh, for fuck's sake. Fine, Broski, it's going fine. Look, I'm in the middle of a video at the moment, all right? A video? You mean the one we're meant to collab on? No. Still scripting that one. <laughs> Alex, you've been scripting this video for around two years now, dude. I'm a very thorough writer! Look, I'm doing a Halloween video. <laughs> Halloween? <laughs> it's in May. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look, it was just the next game and it's a horror game, so yeah. Oh, a horror game? Well, I do like horror games. In fact, you can find many horror game reviews on my YouTube channel, The Friendly Broski. Furthermore, if you're so inclined to, why don't you check out my Twitch, where I stream horror games such as Silent Hill and Resident Evil at twitch.tv forward slash the friendly bro FUCK YOU BROSKY! STOP PROMOTING YOURSELF ON MY CHANNEL! Well, since you're playing a horror game anyways, how about I help you review it? I mean, I could give insight into whatever game you're playing. Will you stop plugging your channel if I do? <laughs> no promises, Alex. No promises. Hello, fellow Bin Raiders, and welcome to the new Indie Bin, where I'm joined by a friend of mine, the friendly Broski. Hey there, viewers, it's me, the friendly Broski. I'm here today to help out my good old friend Indie Bin to review a game in May, not Halloween. So, Indie, what game are we playing today? Horror in the Asylum. We're, we're playing Horror in the Asylum. Once you take the pills the doctors force on you, every night becomes the same. Nightmares, blackouts, and horrible demons from the darkest corners of your mind appear and trap you in the worst of scenarios while you are lost in time and space. The only way out is to solve puzzles in order to find an exit to your dreams. In order to do so, you will need to find and use items while avoiding the vicious monsters that are trying to hunt you down. Quite the galling prospect, wouldn't you agree? The summary of the game starts off rather strong. If it wasn't for the next word in the features section to be spooky, spooky scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skull will shock your spine. Horror in the Asylum is an indie horror game made by Adham Yab. Ad Adham Yab. Adham Yabba, released in February of 2016, reviews range from the game played well on high resolution and low resolution to this isn't necessary. What isn't necessary, I've yet to find out. Well, I'm not exactly sure what I was expecting, but I guess this fits quite well. The game clearly wants me to use an Xbox 360 controller, but as we well know, a pristine specimen of the PC master race like myself will not sully his divine hands with some paltry controller. Keyboard and mouse will do just fine. <coughs> hmm, something's wrong here. It's not very easy to explain, but the input for movement feels very lagged and unresponsive. It's as if the main character's scooting himself along on the back of an old dog. It just feels so crooked almost. Unnatural. Yeah, the controls don't feel very cooperative and tend to hinder any action you took. Besides that, we're greeted at the start of the game by two rather unoriginal gameplay mechanics. The first is the amnesia-esque way in which you open drawers and doors, pulling back on the mouse while holding E as a designated interaction button. The second is the lockpicking, which is ripped straight from Skyrim when you turn the tumbler while trying to find the correct point to pick. And what's with all the fucking nasty saw blades everywhere? I mean, the game's already called Horror in the Asylum, which is the most pointlessly edgy and yet bland name a horror game could have. Like terror in the hospital or spooking in the guest bedroom. With the door finally opened, we move into the hall and... Whoa! Hey, whoa now, okay, whoa! Quite the fucking junk cut there, game. Not really any context for that, and... 
Don't go in there. You can't tell me what to do, bloodstained graffiti on the wall. Who do you think you are, my mum? <laughs> Come on, but oh good. I could be I could be cool. <laughs> Ooh, spooky. <laughs> you know it's funny. That guy's dead on the outside. Well I'm dead on the inside. Well game, you got me. I mean why this skeleton is sat there like a fucking grumpy teenager, I'll never know, but it was it was shocking. I guess. What's immediately apparent, however, is the level design leaves a lot to be desired. There's two side rooms, one with numbers scribbled on the wall in different coloured crayon, and a long corridor. This isn't building an atmosphere, it's just really lazy. The numbers correspond to floor tiles in the far room, and their numeric value determines in what order you press the tiles. I mean, with puzzles, it's right up there with a the Skyrim style lock picking from earlier. Pretty tricky. What the fuck? What was that? Why'd the music change? And what's that? Well, it seems that Horror in the Asylum is a kind of restart on death kind of game. What do you think, Alex? I think fuck this game gives me a reason to smoke. Not again. <laughs> I'll do it this time. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm okay. This is unacceptable. Insta-kill enemies, no life system, devoid of checkpoints, the game relies on trial and error style gameplay to make it through. For instance, when you solve the floor tile puzzle, a skeleton spawns and heads straight to the room. So you need to hide under this desk, which you're supposed to figure out on your own, and wait for him to patrol around the room. He then leaves back down the same hallway, the only hallway in and out of the fucking room, mind you, only to return moments later for no reason to unlock the wall to exit the nightmare and leaves once again. You wouldn't know that unless you die several times and waiting for the skeleton to meander his way up and down the hall each time you die is draining. What I've also noticed while playing the game is this risk meter at the top left. When what I assume to be random noises trigger, the risk meter increases. But it's odd, since I've made much more noise so far while sprinting down hallways, picking locks and even soaring pipes, but every time a door squeaks, the risk increases. No idea what I'm at risk of, dying of boredom most likely. What the fuck? Should you watch? Good question, Alex. You can actually watch me on twitch.tv forward slash the friendly broski, where I stream many horror games. Are you serious? This game has come down to nothing more than trial and error. Every turn is a trap. Every new nightmare is a cold hell which I must face. It trains you. It makes you work for it. Every second hiding under the desk in the first nightmare slowly ticks away, taking a piece of you along with it. Each unfair death a toll you must pay, leading you one step closer to your own demise. It's savage. But there, in the light, what is it? No, no, it couldn't be. <laughs> yes, it is he, the great Shalazar. I found a review left by him on the game store page that led me to his walkthrough. This man, no, this warrior battled through the game far too many times to count. He's seen it all, he's fought through every bullshit trap and made it to the promised land. Simply seeing what's going to happen makes the game so much easier. Without Shalazar's video, I doubt either of us would have made it through the game. There's so much crap to deal with. The risk meter, for instance, simply serves to elongate the game by making you slowly peel open every door and container, tugging it open inch by inch, hoping the game won't just bug out and kill you anyway. And everything you do is so chorish. Walk through the door, pick the lock, open the door, radiator. Yeah. Shine a black light on the wall, open a cupboard with a symbol combination that changes every fucking time! Grab the saw, saw off the pipes, grab the crowbar, crowbar off the planks of wood, nightmare. And each nightmare poses a shitty, cliche, overused puzzle. For instance, this one is a floor tile puzzle. 
but it's not too hard. This puzzle just requires you to turn all the spots on the floor green, so you just you just walk on this one, and then this one next, and okay, no, hold on. Uh, you you just have to press this one. N no, this one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Shit. Okay, it's um. No, you press this one. No, I got it this time. It's this one, and then it's this one. Uh, no, no, no. It's this one. No, for fuck's sake. Come on. No, come on, you piece of shit. No, 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 no. You died. I know! The sheer lack of self-awareness the developer had is uncanny. At no point does the game decide to give you a break. Each nightmare is a trial, in the same way peeling off your toenails with a pair of pilots is a trial. It's sadistic. For instance, there's a labyrinth level when you're plunged into complete darkness in a maze where skeletons are patrolling. In this maze, you need to find four levers while trying to illuminate your way to about three feet in front of you, with skeletons aggroing about three feet in front of you. It's maddening. The goddamn alert noise for the skeletons chasing you is the most terrifying noise I've had to deal with in any game I've ever played. And not because the setting, environment, and physical threat itself was that well constructed, but because the consequence for insta-death by a skeleton tickling is returning to the start of the fucking game! Towards the very end of the game, the elevator ride breaks unless you grate your face against the door to no clip through it like you're cheating in Gmod. I'm surprised this is a bug and not a game feature, considering there's a part towards the end where spiders crawl through vents, and if you move at all whilst they're out, you'll be instantly killed. This happened three times in a row with no warning that it'll happen, but with the crowbar from earlier, we open one of the morgue doors slowly retrieve the key, and leave via the front door. And that is that. Oh, Christ, I'm glad that's over. Oh, come on, Alex, it wasn't too bad, was it? It was atrocious. The game clearly isn't programmed correctly, it's buggy and unfair, and it's only built to milk playtime instead of taking any consideration for the player's enjoyment. Without any deaths, it takes about 20 minutes, tops. Well, I thought it brought us closer together as friends. I hate you, and I'm going to get a drink. This game has left a very sour taste in my mouth. Oh, fucking shit games. Hello fellow bin raiders and thank you for making it to the end of the video. Can I suggest you leave a like if you did like it? That'll tell me if uh if you liked it. Also, you could probably um, leave a comment, tell me what you think, what your flavour ice cream favour is, I'd, whatever, I don't mind. And if you want to see more stuff like this, why not subscribe? That'd be pretty cool as well. Furthermore, if you want to get updates on this channel, you can check out my Facebook page or my Twitter and give them a like and follow. That'll let you know when new videos are coming out, so that'd be, that'd be pretty neat as well. If you want to watch me stream, I'm now doing some streams on my Twitch stream. Do follow my Facebook or Twitter and I'll be announcing when I'm going to be streaming on there. And we can hang out and have a good time doing stuff. Uh, I'm currently playing through Fallout New Vegas with a um, punchy guy called Tyro Max Fist. It's, it's pretty fun. I'd like to thank the friendly broski for collabing with me on this video. Do check out his stuff. Guy is extremely talented. He's not that friendly, but maybe the name's ironic, I really don't know. But check him out, he's pretty cool as well. And hey, if you want to just watch some more of this channel, uh, on the left is my last Indie Bin episode on Legendary, which is pretty good. And on my right is my new Q review, so uh, check them out, uh, they're pretty good. But that's all for now, Bin Raiders. Keep Bin Raiding, and I'll see you next time.